So today's lesson about Python functions. We have spoken about functions before. We had a lesson about functions when we were talking about uh, algorithms and pseudocode. Uh, so we've seen this. Um, and even when we did it with algorithms and pseudocode, I showed you how it worked in, in, um, in Python. So there shouldn't be anything here that's really too new. So that's what I'm hoping. And so we should be able to go ahead with it. Uh, the other thing I noticed is that uh, in the test, some students actually did write some functions. So people have seen it. Um, so hopefully it won't seem too strange. So um, this lesson then is about specifically how do we do functions in Python as opposed to doing them in uh, pseudocode or as opposed to doing them in some other language. Um, th though we are going to talk a little bit about uh, flowcharts here first. So in a flowchart, we would represent a function like this. And so you see that uh, this rectangular box, you'd be familiar with the rectangular box that represents any process. Any process in a, in a flow chart can be represented by a rectangular box. When we put these two little lines on the side, that means that that's going to be a function. And if you look at this function, what we see is that this function has some things that we should, we should recognize. Uh, first, we're saying that the function assigns a val the, re the output of the function is going to be assigned to a value here of z. So in other words, z is a variable that takes it, um, that takes a value, which is the output of the function, um, whatever that function name would be. Uh, we can see that this function has two parameters, or you could call them arguments. They would, they would represent inputs into the function. So when we call this function, we would call it, we'd have to, uh, we'd have to call it in a way that we could use this variable, uh, but we'd also have to pass two variables to it. So there, yeah, when I say use this variable, you could put a print statement. And, uh, and avoid using a variable, but you would have to do something with whatever is being output from the function. So the, out, the function outputs something and it inputs something. The output is this value to the left of the equal sign. The equal sign doesn't mean equal here, it means assigns a value. And the, yeah, the brackets holds the inputs values, which are going to be two variables in another, um, the calling uh, main or function. Now in Python, this slide again is just specific to Python. If we're talking about pseudocode, if we're talking about Java programming, JavaScript, we don't do it this way, right? In JavaScript, we use the word function. Uh, in, uh, in Python, we use D DEF. DEF kind of, I guess, stands for define. It would be short for define. So we define and then we say the name. The name there is a name that you make up. It's a user-defined name. You make a name for the function, which you think best um, would describe what the function would do, some meaningful name so people would have an idea what that does. Now we use these terms parameters. I've also referred to them as arguments. Those are going to be the things inside the bracket on the, uh, on the uh, function heading. Uh, they will be inputs. Uh, function with any, with any um, control structure in, in uh, Python, we use, use a colon to represent the start of the control structure. And so when we, when we define a function, we end that line, which has the heading with a colon, and then everything below that will be indented. That's part of the function. Everything indented below it will be part of the function. And yeah, we, we have a return statement. Now the return statement is actually optional. You could have a function that didn't return a value, maybe just did something like printed something or something like that. Uh, but mostly they do have a return statement uh, and which in which case would uh, be the output. Um, well, yeah, you, you can have a return without a variable, which just means we're at the end of the function now. Um, what else is there? I think that's kind of it. So, we use this word call and it has a special meaning when we're talking about programming. And, we're, and it, so in this case, in Python, the word call has a special meaning. It's not like you calling your friend on the phone. When we call a function, what we're doing is at some point in our program, we are stating the function name and any parameters that go with it and any return value that comes from it, we're stating it at that point. And when we call the function, that means we want that function to be executed now. And here are the variables that go with it. 
and this is the return value that we want. So the word calling here has a very specific and sort of a technical meaning, I guess you could say. Uh, yeah, we, when we call it, we mean execute the function now, when we call it. And how we execute the function is we use the function's name with the parameters that it might need as inputs. And if we have to save the value that comes as a return value, we might have a variable there for that too. You have seen this slide before, and I hope you can remember it. But when we were talking about uh, pseudocode and flowcharts and functions a while ago, a few weeks ago, uh, we looked at this, um, this, um, this slide. And the idea of this slide is this black thing here. Um, and the black color, I think, was chosen not by mistake, because we, we have this term a black box. And a black box is an idea that there's something there that happens that's quite important, but we can't see inside it. And uh, so for the function, this for this function heading, we can see that there's something happening there, but we can't see what's inside it. To find out what's inside it, we'd have to go and look at the code uh, that's written for that function. And so over here on the left, this is what that function does. So here in the black, the black box bit, we can see that this function uh, takes in inputs of assignment, quiz, and grade, and puts an output of an overall. Over on the left here, we see how that works, is that those three numbers are added together. Another number is generated by taking those, the, the sum of those three numbers and dividing it by three. And then the, the value that has, um, that results from dividing the, the sum by three is returned out. And so in this, function call, this could be like a function call, the overall value will, will end up being whatever is returned out of that function. All right, so this is not Python. This is pseudocode. So hopefully you can recognize that. Now, in this lesson, we've talked about that when we uh, define a function in Python, we use DEF, right? In pseudocode, we use function. The other thing that's, that would be different is in pseudocode, we're defining the type of each of these variables. In Python, we don't need to. We just say you know x, y, z. Uh, then uh, in pseudocode, we have to use these curly braces. Well, pseudocode is is a little less defined than Python programming language. Uh, in Python, what do we do? We put a colon there, and then we just do the indent. But the rest of the stuff, yeah, that looks like Python. I mean, you wouldn't need to say that this was a float. Python will do that for you automatically, right? So, I mean, take away the word float, take away the ints, and the rest of that could look like Python, but you would replace the function with a def. All right, and so then we've got another one, same kind of idea, right? So this is supposed to be, represent a function which calls, because here's the call, down this, this line at the bottom, that's the call where it calls the function average grade, returns a value, which is then printed printed out. So, yeah. And this is what the previous slide, the one we just looked at, this is what that slide looks like if we translated it into Python code. Now, there it is. Okay, so, so I'm going to take that code and let's, let's have a look at it in Python. Because I do have Python, uh, I do have idle on this computer. I think. Oh, my clumsy fingers are made. But the, yeah, there it is. So this is the uh, we've done this program before. I'm pretty sure. Uh, so there's that code. Um, if we wanted to see how it was working, it would probably be good if we did a print in here. And so if we put some lines of code, remember doing this before? We've done this before, right? So this could be line one. This could be line two, line three. And oh, yeah, so in the print statement, we could print all of those things, right? So. Uh, Let's just do each one separately. Oh. <laughs> Should put my glasses on so I can see the keys. All right. So um, 
A. Um, what else have we got there? We got X. Uh, I should put what is the line, the, the line number, right? So this is line number four. Uh, so this is going to show what's what each of these variables are a x y and z and s sorry that um i'm a little slow in doing that oh. so here this is where i'll put um a or yeah So I'm just going to copy in those variables. Um, so there's going to be one there. There's going to be one here. And one here. It's going to be kind of long, eh? And one here. And one here. So I'm going to print out each of those variables. on that line so we can see. So this one is A, this one is X, this one is Y, and this one is Z, and this one is um, S. All right, so we've also got a print at the end. So I think the, the reason to do this is that we can see when we go inside the loop. So let's run this. This will be even better when we make it a loop. Let's run it. So let's see. So let's call that average. Should call it average with a, with a function, right? Um, assignment grade, whatever. Um, would have been so. Um, you see, so what I was trying to get you to see is you can tell where the function was called because this print only happens inside the function. And so we see before we, so at this point here, which is after we ask for the test grade, after we ask for the test grade, then what it does is it, this is the function call. Here we are calling the function. And so what happens there is all of this stuff and all of this stuff happens before the next line of code, right? The next line of code doesn't happen until that's finished. And so that's exactly how that has happened, right? So the program actually started here. The first thing that we saw was here, right? I would, what I should have done is we, we could notice these other lines of code, I suppose. So like this is line five, um, this is line six. Well, actually we could, we could put it in here, right? This is line six, agree? Um, and just to, just to make it more obvious, uh, I'll just put this last one. So that's six. And so this would be 10. I'm just doing this so you can see the way that it's processed. Now, I think we've done this before, but I think it's sort of, so it, we do those numbers again. Uh, they're they're going to be slightly different numbers. It doesn't matter. It works with different numbers. And so we can see the lines of code, how, how they progress. Line six, line seven, line eight, line four. Okay, so why line four after line eight? Well, if we look at the program, we'll see. We started here at line six because the way that it works with a function is you define the function first, but it it isn't executed until it's called. It's only here, this is the function call. It's only here that we actually do anything with that function. Here we call the function and then it will go back and do these things. So that's why it went back and did line four after line eight, because line eight was the last one before the function call. And then after line four, it went to line 10 thing after the function call. I hope that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah, that, that's kind of how functions work. So we define the function and then we call then we call the function inside some other routine which may be the main
Um, it's worth talking about this. There's a bunch of built-in functions in, in Python. And so these, these functions, the ones on this slide at least, we can use these just by calling their name and entering in the, the correct um, parameters for them. So somebody has gone ahead and written all of these. Now, these ones here are called casting. Sorry, I should do it on here. These ones here are called casting. Casting, what that will do is it'll take any value uh, that is a different um, type of variable and convert it to the type that you cast, cast it and then return that value. So it'll return a value which is converted to the new type. So you can take like a float or a, or a character and convert it to integer. You can take a number and convert it to a string. You can take a character and convert it to a float. And we've done those before. You saw in the previous lecture, this is lecture from last week, we used this function. We used it last week and we probably used it before then. This is a string function. Uh, the length the len function, what it was going to do is going to return a number and the number will be how many characters in the string. So if you got a string x, then len will return how the, the length of that string. We've used input over and over and over again. You put a prompt in there and um, uh, so x would be a big long string, which is going to show up on the screen. And then the input is going to return a string, which is going to be whatever somebody typed in the keyboard. A uh, print, again, you put a string inside there, x would be a string, and that will end up on the, on the screen. And so we've got some others. Now, these ones here, little mathematical ones, they're going to return true or false if they check. All right, so, um, sorry, not all of them are returning true or false. This is going to return a number. This is going to return a, a value. This is going to return a character. It's going to return a binary number. This is going to return a hex number. So these, these ones here return numbers, but the uh, and a absolute is going to return a number as well, actually. And it's going to return the absolute value of x, where x would be a number. Uh, so you guys know how absolute num number works? Um, if you have a negative number of 100, then the absolute value of 100 is 100. It just converts everything to a positive number uh, with the same magnitude. Uh, powers, I hope you're familiar with those two. ASCII. There's a bunch of numbers that are between 0 and 255. And each of those numbers represents a character that can be used in a string. And so if you put in a string value, it'll return the number, which, which um, relates to that string. A character does the opposite. Uh, you take the ASCII number, you put that in with the x, and it'll return the character for that. Um, take a number um, like a, a digital a normal number and put it into the bin function, and it will return a binary value. And likewise, take a normal number and put it into a hex function, and it will return the hex value. Libraries are kind of like functions, but they're not built in. All right, so those functions in that previous slide, they're built into Python. You can just call them, use them anywhere you want. Libraries, you got an extra step that you have to use before you can use the, um, the functions in a library. And so the thing, thing with libraries is these are, um, people have written little computer pro functions um, in Python that will do various things. And they've saved them to a library, which is published and is available. You can download their library and put it into your computer memory. And then you can access that library um, by importing it. Uh, so in the distribution that you get of your Python with idle or whatever, uh, you, those libraries will usually come. Sometimes they won't. You'll have to go and find them and then, and then install them on your computer, install a library, or else you'll have to refer to, uh, have an import which refers to um, the library on a web server somewhere. Um, people do that a lot. Um, so a lot of the libraries will be on the web server, but, and then you have to have a command that imports it. So that import could be from your uh, local computer. C drive, or it could be from a could be from a um, a web server. But once you've imported the library, it will be sitting in your memory, and you can use the special functions that come with it. Um, so, for example, there's a math library that has square root and pi functions that we've used. I think we've already used those. Um, so, what else? All right. So, here's a little program to to do that. Now, this is using the math library, and 
the math library will um, will give us a, a number pi, and we can then run this. This this wouldn't be very long. We could we could do that. Oh, maybe not. That's a picture. Oh no, oh, that's it. So um, this was um, circle or something. Now, this is what I mean. If I put a, if I didn't put the import in, I'll get an error. You'll see this will be an error. Um, what is the circle's area? So, error. So it's giving me an error because it's like, well, what's this math thing, right? Um, so I can overcome that error by importing the math. Uh, so those functions do require you to um, here, close that so we can start over again. By doing the import, then it will work. So, uh, but if I didn't, if I didn't do the import, you know, when I when I commented it out, that program, that that these particular things, math has to be imported or it doesn't work. I'm, I think I said that enough. Um, yeah, I would have this right over that, right? Uh, so we've done that. Uh, again, these libraries have to be imported first. They're, they, this one comes with the distribution. I didn't have to sort of say somewhere on a server somewhere. Um, so math is there, ready to be used. Now we've got these special, uh, these ones are called methods. Sorry, it's hidden by the. So method is something that works with a, um, with an object. So in object oriented programming, uh, we have uh, objects and objects, uh, classes and methods. Uh, so a method is going to be associated with an object. You'll learn later that you can create your own objects in Python. It's a fairly powerful programming language with lots of nice tools in it, but it does take into account fully and allow you to use object-oriented programming. So the reason why I mentioned that is a string, a string is considered in Python as an object, but it's an object which is, uh, you know, when you use the string, uh, when you enter a string, Python creates an object for you, which is that string object. So because it's, it's an object, uh, it has methods that are assigned to that object. So each string, so that's why we start these, that the reason why I mentioned that is with methods, you have to have the object name before the dot. You see the little dot here? That's how these methods work. So whatever is the name of your string, which will be the variable name that you've assigned to your string, then you put a dot, then you can use this string, this uh, string method with it. Okay. So what these ones are doing, these is, 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 these are Boolean methods and they will return true or false. Uh, so basically we can use this to see if our value uh, is, um, uh, if our string is uppercase, lowercase, uh, if it's numeric, if it's alphabetical, or if it's alphanumeric. And then there's lots of other things that we can do. We can actually change the string. And we saw that here. And we've used these ones, right? Where we'd put the variables. Sorry, I should do it on here because half the people are on. Um, these ones here, uh, we change the value to the, uh, sorry, the string to be uppercase, lowercase, or capitalized. Print is a function, right? Uh, len is a function. There's lots of little functions that we've been using, maybe without knowing their functions. Uh, but why it's important for you to know that it's a function is because the way that we use it kind of works the same as those others. Now, print doesn't uh, return a value, does it? All it does is it does something. But it has a parameter which is passed to it, which is the thing that you're going to print. And so, so print, like every other function, you say the name of the function, and then you open the brackets. Uh, and then you put the parameter that's going to go in there. 
we've got some special um, little parameters that we can include in our print function, uh, the slash n, which means that at the end of this, create, uh, create a new line, go down to the next line. Uh, and we've got this end, which allows us to not go down to the new line. So the, the uh, end will allow us to do pr two print statements, one after the other, and um, replace the new line with something else. So in this case, what we're saying here is when I print this statement, um, at the end, instead of going to a new line, I'm just going to make a space. So we could put something else in there. You can put a comma or a colon or whatever. Um, it would, but it have to be in quotes. Um, but here we've just got a space. And so, th so that when we print these two, two statements, they're two different statements on two different lines, but the output is all on one line. Because instead of going to a new line, which we would normally do in the input in, um, as the default, what we're doing is at the end of that line, we just put a space. Okay. So what's happening here? Let's trace this and see if we can figure out what's going on. Maybe we can put it into Python later, but let's see if we can trace it first. Um, so what do we got going on here? The first line of code is to access our library. We have a library, which is the math library. We can't use it until we import. So we're importing the library. Then the next line, we are saying, we're gonna create our own function. This function does not exist, but we're gonna make it exist now. And so the name of that function is gonna be called area circle. It's gonna take one parameter that's gonna come in. We're gonna call that R. And R probably would be like radius or something, right? Because that's typically how we do things with circles. And then the correct way to do a, um, a, a function de definition is to uh, put a colon at the end of it. Then we need to have all of the lines that work with that function. They have to be indented. Now, actually, just looking at this, when it, if you were kind of didn't want to do too much typing, you could remove the A from this. You could do that. You could just say return math.py times math.power2. You could do that. And people sometimes do that. You don't actually have to create a variable and return the variable. You just return whatever you want. Um, in this case, you're doing a uh, little program and you could just return, I mean, a little execution of a um, mathematical and you could just return that. But you can create a variable and then return the variable, but you don't need to. Um, all right, so what I noticed is maybe I should see who's here, right? So Nora's here, Frank's here, Hamid's here, Zara's here. So I've already noticed Zara and Hamid. So there's Nora and Frank. Um, so maybe we can, how many more slides have we got? Uh, I was gonna say, maybe we can look at that, but let's go through because um, Maybe we can come back to it. You're supposed to write a function that takes the side of a square as input and then displays the area. So the input is gonna be like, a, a, I guess you can call it side. So def area square, and then the, in brackets, you'd say side colon, and then you'd do the calculation, which is a square, you know, um, side times side and then you'd return it and then in the main you would call the function and it's done here right so now why are we uh, all right so we're using this i was going to say we're using we're using this um this uh method that uh, from a library uh called power and um what this one does is you say the value that you want to be raised to a power then you say how many how many powers you want to be raised to. So this is taking s and squaring it. We could have just done it without math and just said you know that a is takes the value of side times side. But you know hey, we like to use math, so we do it that way. Now I'm going to do this one with you in uh, in uh, Python I think because it's a little bit more interesting than the last one. Uh, but what we're getting here is we're defining, so this is the same, if we look back on the previous 
All right. If we look back on the previous um, example, this I'm pretty sure this is the same sort of thing that's going on. We input a side, uh, we raise that side to its squared power, to the power of two, and then we return that. So that's our function. And then our function is called here, right? And But our function is gonna be called multiple times inside of a loop. So we're gonna get five different sides because it's squares, you only need to get one side. And then we're going to print those, um, shall we? So I mean, uh, we will just take that code. Now, if I try and put this code into, into Python, you know it's not gonna work because, oops, didn't. Yeah, it's there without the numbers. It is gonna work. Ha. So let's, wow, how about that? So this is area of a square, area five squares. Um, what can we do to, to, let's put a print statement in here like we've done that before, right? So um, this, I think you'll agree, this is line, this is line one, uh, this is line two, so this is line three. And let's do a print here on line, print. Sorry, I really should be wearing my glasses. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna print um, A and, and S. S. So A and S. And we're going to print that we're on line four. So we can see that. And so this one here would be line, this is line, uh, so that's line five. So this is line six. And so this is line seven. So this is line eight. Oh, this is not gonna work, is it? Because it's got the wrong quote. Yeah, that fixed it. So that's line eight, and this is line nine, line 10, this is line 11. So um, yeah, let's go. And so we'll see, we'll see how the function is called. What we will see, what we're gonna see is we're gonna see line eight will be printed first, right? Um, and then, It'll calculate this for us, and then it'll print that, print the um, area uh, line. Sorry, then it'll do this. So it'll print line eight. Then it'll go and print line four. Then it'll print line eleven. So it's going to go eight, four, eleven, eight, four, eleven. Should do that five times. Somebody's chatting. Did you post the test two marks? Yes, I did. So they're on D two L. Let's run. So this is area uh, five squares or something. So we can just put any numbers, I suppose. So this should be 25, but do you see? Eight, four, 11, eight. You can see that pattern, eight, four, 11, eight, four, 11. Why? Starts off here, then calls the function. That makes it go to line four. Then after it goes to line four, it goes to the next one, which is line eight. Then it's gonna repeat the loop. It's gonna do that five times. So line eight, then line four, then, uh, then line 11, back to line eight, um, seven, four, 11, back to line eight. Um, and you know, that'll continue five times unless I stop it. Getting some bigger squares. So eight, five, 11, eight, five, 11, why? I hope we're, we're familiar with that now. This is where the program actually starts. Doesn't start on line one. 
um, well, actually it does. <laughs> uh, but the, it goes from line one to, to down here um, because the import has to happen first. Right. And that's, that's all there is in, in the notes of this, of this, uh, this lesson. Uh, so I'm not going to go beyond that. I'm just going to ask you to have a look at that. Maybe anybody has some questions about the function. I hope it becomes familiar to you now because we have seen this before. We did do it before a little bit. Um, I've said it like five times in this lesson. I'll just finish up saying it now. How we do the function is we define the function. Sometimes we have to um, use other functions that uh, are in libraries, like in this one, we got a math library. We needed that because we wanted to call this special function here, which was the power, which was in a math library that we hadn't created, but it's sitting in our memory. And all we have to do is import it and then we can call it. But look at that, it, it looks the same as the way we do our other functions, right? We just say, okay, here's our function, but it has, to, but this function is in a library, math, which we've imported. And if we didn't import it, remember they, if we didn't have the import, even if I spelled import wrong, then this would fail there, right? The, um, that function wouldn't be available to us, but it is available to us. So we define the function and then at some point, and it's totally optional, at some point we can call that function. When we call it, that's when it's executed and only then. Plus, okay. So if you have any questions, I'm here. Otherwise, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop. I guess nobody's really, it's easy enough, right? I hope.